Well, hello, uh, welcome back to the continuing lecture in um, return on investment. Uh, this is Dr. Jeff Hong, and um, <clears throat> this is the second video uh, in this series um, uh, on the uh, return on investment. So, uh, in our previous uh, video, uh, we discussed the uh, uh, holding period return, you know, the definition of holding period return, and um, we made distinction between the um, uh, uh, the important. We made, you know, uh, I stress the importance of distinguishing between the holding period return and the uh, annualized return, uh, because of course, you know, um, uh, holding period, uh, you cannot compare the uh, total return from different holding periods because they are on, it's like apples and oranges. They are not on the same uh, 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 length of time, right? I mean, to compare it, you have to be put it on the same uh, equal playing field and the uh, uh, different uh, length of time or different uh, holding period uh, clearly you know excuse the um, uh, the uh, playing field it's not it's not going to be a level playing field so to turn it into a level playing field we need to uh, uh, use the annualized return right we talked about that last time so uh, today we're gonna actually take a look at um, uh, the process of, you know, uh, calculating the holding period return and the annualized return. So, um, first, let's take a look at this example. This is an um, this is an example of uh, buying and selling a house. So, as I said before, um, when we say return on investment, I mean uh, what is an investment? I mean, investment can, uh, types of investment instrument can vary. There are financial instruments such as stocks and bonds, mutual funds and you know, um, ETF. Basically, you know, uh, let's call it stocks. Um, and uh, bonds are uh, different from stocks, but you know um, uh, we're not going. We're going to make that distinction later on. At this point, just you know consider uh, they are all financial uh, in, uh, instruments, and there are also uh, um, uh, assets like you know real estates. Uh, it's also an investment if you're buying a real estate. You know, um, uh, inevitably, you know. Um, uh, the price will increase or decrease over time, right? The house value will decrease or increase over time. So uh, inevitably, you know, um, it's got that dimension. It's got that investment dimension, right? So in this example, right, uh, suppose you bought a house back in 2005. And also to make it consistent, we assume that you bought it at the um, you bought it at the uh, end of 2005, okay? It, uh, and then you sold it at the end of 2016. So the uh, house value measured, I mean, in reality, you don't necessarily, you don't necessarily, the point of purchase cannot be necessarily so convenient uh, the beginning of the year or the end of the year. It can happen at any point during the year. But uh, for simplicity of our model, we'll assume the price's house value is measured as of the end of the year. And this is the price you paid, okay? And this is the price you, uh, you sold it for. So uh, in 2005, at the end of the year, you know, uh, you bought the house and you paid this price, 150K. And then uh, annually, the house value either grew or even uh, uh, dropped, like, you know, uh, between 2012 and 2013, 
the house value actually dropped. Also, two thousand between two thousand six and two thousand seven, house value dropped. Of course, there are times when prices go down, for you know uh, market reasons. You know, uh, the demand is uh, below uh, supply. Then, at a lower level, then supply, then price would go down, or other you know uh, sy uh, systemic reasons like you know economic uh, crisis um, and sometimes you know the the price remains flat right like in 2014 and 15 so what is the uh, uh, what's the formula for holding period return remember that uh, I want to I want to write it here, but uh, uh, let's try to, uh, 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 if you can. And basically, it consists of uh, two components, capital gains and uh, uh, cash flow, additional income. Now, uh, additional income, now ca cash flow is also, uh, I mean, you know, uh, capital gains is also uh, a cash flow, right? But this capital gains is not realized until uh, until you sell, right? Makes sense. Uh, it doesn't get realized until you sell. Um, so uh, capital gains will, um, but you know, um, capital gains will be uh, for the entire uh, holding period will happen only at one point, right? But even if you don't sell, Annually, you can uh, just you know um, uh, even if you don't sell, you can calculate the uh, capital gains. I mean, uh, think about it. Between 2005 and 2006, as long as you have the uh, price data, you can calculate the capital gains year by year. What I did here is uh, between see. Um, Capital gains between 2015 and 2016, right? And so the you know uh, simple. You just you know um, uh, you just do uh, um, 2016 price minus 2015 price. So PT plus one minus PT. Make sense? Okay, in this case, PT being the uh, previous year, right? Uh, or the uh, current year, and PT plus one uh, the next year. I mean, if PT, if this is PT, we can call PT minus one. Make sense? PT is always the uh, current year, right? And so one year later will be PT plus one, one year before one year prior will be pt minus one uh, so if we call this pt then this is pt minus one if we call this pt this will be pt plus one okay of course if pt is uh 2000 uh, time t is 2015 you don't have the actual data for 2016 because when you are in 2015 uh, 2016 is still uh, in the future, and you don't have the data, right? And in that case, PT plus one is only a forecast. Makes sense? If you are, you know. Um, but uh, in this case, this is PT, right? We have data, all the actualized data. We're standing at the end of 2016. Looking back uh, 11 years into the past, we have all the data. Right, a, a realized data uh, from 2005 through uh, 2016. Uh, so none of them are forecast; they are just, you know, actual data. And then, uh, if we call this PT, this is PT minus one, PT minus two, PT minus three, and so on. Make sense? So uh, once you um, uh, take the difference between the two, I got that. And then all I need to do is I just drag it down. When you drag it down, then 
Uh, the formula gets copied, right? Okay. And uh, so uh, as you drag it down, that formula that uh, the copied, well, you know, that was copied will get pasted all the way down. And you cannot, uh, there's a, uh, there's a, a specific way you must do it because you cannot just drag it down regardless of any uh, any point. You can drag it down only when you uh, place your cursor to this um, lower right corner of the cell. You see, when I select a cell, when you select a cell, the borderline, you see the borderline, right? The borderline appears. And of all the border lines, look, when you select this cell, um, this corner, I call the southeast corner, the southeast corner of the border line um, is a broken uh, uh, square dot, right? Broken, uh, the border line is broken at that point, and then um, it's a square dot. So only when it is a square dot, then you can uh, drag it down to copy and paste, okay? And then when you bring the cursor to that corner, then um, your cursor turns into a thin black cross, okay? That's uh, only then you can copy and paste. You can drag it down. Uh, you can also drag it up, you know? If I started from here, I can uh, drag it up. For example, uh, let's say I don't have anything here. Then I started from here, right? And there's nothing, of course, because uh, B14 has no data. So this will be zero, right? Because there's no, uh, I didn't buy, I bought the house only in 2005. So in 2004, I don't have any data, right? It, it's irrelevant, uh, the range, you know, the time range or uh, data range, you know, uh, relevant for us only between, 2005 and 2016. And then, uh, so, uh, but anyway, since there's nothing there, right? It's okay, you can do this, right? Uh, and then, um, if there is something here, then of course, you know, uh, uh, it's, gonna, it's gonna interfere with the, uh, with this calculation. But since there's nothing, I can do that. And then I, I also, bring my cursor to this corner and just pull it up and then right so anyway uh the, it's the formula that gets copied you know and on excel if you you can also copy using you know uh, for example i can copy that cell and highlight the rest of them uh, because it's the same formula that's going to be in there, and I paste, and the formulas are being they all copied, right? This so it's not the uh, data that gets copied. You got to remember this in Excel. It's a stupid thing, you know. If you copy and then you know if the data gets copied, then <laughs> obviously uh, it's pointless because we want to find the you know differences between. Um, each, you know, uh, end of the year value, house value, right? And also, uh, uh, another thing you have to remember is if uh, if you place the cursor not here, for example, otherwise it would be a, a like a fat white cross, right? And if you bring it to um, another borderline area, right? Uh, anywhere else, that it, it turns into a a uh, cross with arrowhead, thin black cross with arrowhead. Then uh, what that means is you can move. Okay. That means, you know, when the uh, uh, cursor turns to this, then that means you can move that cell. For example, you can move it here, right? But uh, we don't want to do that. That's not, uh, I'm gonna... so here, um, so these are the ca annual capital gains, annual capital gains. And then um, uh, this is the uh, total, right? Uh, 
this summation, right? There's some. Uh, of course, this will also apply to this, right? And then, uh, but, you know, uh, it also applies to this. So this is the uh, sum of all the capital gains. Okay. And I summed everything. You can also get to the same result simply by, uh, I'm just doing this on the side. You can see if you subtract uh, 2016, from you know you, uh, from 2016 house value, if you take away uh, your initial investment, right? It's the same thing, right? It's the same thing. But I didn't. Uh, so this is like P T plus N minus P T. Okay. But I also did it this way. Uh, it's the same thing. Now. Our next question is then uh, to, to calculate a uh, holding period return, we can uh, have two scenarios. Now think about it. When you buy a house, okay, there can be two, um, uh, two purposes, right? Uh, one uh, or so two scenarios, right? Depending on which purpose. Uh, one purpose is buying a house as your home, right? It's a residential. Um, it's a residential uh, investment. In that case, you know, uh, because you're using it as your home, it doesn't generate any incidental income, right? Um, so that's scenario one. Uh, but second scenario is you bought the house as a rental property with the purpose of uh, with the purpose of using it as a rental property. And if you bought the house as a rental property, uh, there one there will be also additional incidental income. Incidental income is you know of course the rental income, right? See, I call uh, a rental income will be a uh, uh, regular. I mean, if you rent it out, you know, it won't be incidental. But, you know, uh, uh, I call it, I retain, you know, the term incidental income, because if this is not a house, but a, uh, a stock, and as I said, uh, stocks will have capital gains or capital loss, right? But also stocks will have dividends. But I, and I told you, dividends are uh, not an obligation. Right, the companies may or may not pay dividends. If they pay dividends, good, but sometimes they can skip and bypass dividends, or some companies do not pay dividends at all. So dividends are literally incidental income. Make sense? If you buy bonds, bonds will have capital gains or capital loss, and because bonds are uh, like borrowings from the company's perspective, it was a sold company that sold a bond, right? Uh, but from your perspective, from investor's perspective, it's a lending. So for any loan, right, there will be interest. It's an obligation. So um, uh, this house model fits perfectly uh, the, also the, uh, the case of, you know, financial instruments as well because all the financial instruments also have capital gains and they may or may not have incidental incomes. But let's say uh, if you buy the house in, in scenario one where you just use it as your home, then there is no, ignore this, no uh, rental income. And then the only cash flow from uh, that scenario will be only the capital gains. Now, in scenario two, uh, you bought the house as a uh, for rental purpose, right? It's a purely investment uh, property. So then you rent it out, and there will be a uh, rental incomes now. Uh, and now in this example, I didn't put any um, uh, uh, rental income in uh, the first four years. Uh, first of all. When you bought it, you know, uh, uh, at the end of 2005, you don't have any chance to uh, rent it, so there's nothing. Now, 
Uh, I intentionally left, you know, uh, these three years blank because uh, assuming that this house needed to be uh, renovated, I mean, uh, if this was a uh, like uh, three story house, right? It was a uh, uh, residential home uh, and it was originally not uh, built uh, with uh, for the you know purpose of renting it out. But then you will need to uh, uh, convert it into an apartment, uh, uh, you know, building. I mean, the, you will have to do something to uh, fit the uh, uh, building code, you know, to qualify as, you know, rental uh, apartment building or something like that. So maybe for the first three years, you were, you know, doing some basic construction work for converting into a rental building. And from 2009, you started to rent it out. Okay, it looks like there were some, uh, after the first two years, you know, uh, uh, increase in uh, rent, right? It looks like 10% like increase in rent and so on. Now, so uh, we're gonna uh, we're gonna look into the uh, scenario two later on, but you know let's just focus on the scenario one. In scenario one, so how do you calculate the uh, holding period return? See, because there is no uh, in scenario one, because there is no uh, uh, incidental income or ca cash flow, well, we can ignore that and we can simply uh, divide capital gains or PT plus N minus PT, right? We divide it by, simply by PT. So um, here, um, holding period return without cash flow. Okay, so what did I do? I did uh, PT plus N, right? And uh, minus PT, and let's call this P price 2005, and call this price 2011, or you can call this uh, price P0, price at time zero, and you can call this price at time 11, P sub 11, P sub zero, right? P sub 11, right? So P sub 11 minus P sub zero divided by P sub zero, that's 233%, right? Also, the same thing. I did what? C14, which is the uh, basically capital gains throughout the entire holding period, right? Capital gains, sum of all of these annual capitals, and divided by the initial investment. Okay? Then I got 233%. Okay? Um, so this is the uh, uh, holding period return in scenario one. Now uh, back to let let me uh, go back to uh, let me go back to the uh, the slide. Okay, you see, so what we just did was, you know, uh, this term was zero, right? In uh, uh, scenario one, this term is zero because we, you know, uh, scenario one, we're not renting it out. Uh, and we just did, you know, so this term drops out because it's zero. And then this was like 350,000 and this was 150,000. So you, um, that was the holding period return. Uh, in the next video, uh, I'm going to talk about scenario two, the holding period return in scenario two. And then uh, also we talk about how we annualize this holding period return, right? Okay. So um, this is the uh, end of the video two. And... Um, I will uh, see you uh, in, I will uh, we'll continue this and uh, in 
video three. I will see you in video three. Okay, end of video.